Hey everybody, hope and pray that you're doing well today as we come to our word from the word. And today, that word is stand, stand. Now, uh, we're in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, um, finishing up the rest of this chapter um, that we started with yesterday. Uh, today, going to be dealing with verses 13 through 17. So, um, as we're just basically taking care of 2 Thessalonians all this week, you know, we talked about the retribution and seeking justice and judge, uh, judgment or revenge for others. And we know that's going to, God is going to take care of that. Uh, he is the righteous judge. And uh, then we talked about the lawlessness that is going to uh, just be even more prevalent than it is now uh, once the Antichrist is on the scene. But remember, the church uh, will be raptured up by that time. So today we're talking about stand. So I wanted to remind you of that, where we're coming from. And, uh, you know, I even thought about, man, even as I said, stand, I know that, you know, standing and kneeling and all this stuff is, is all over the headlines. And that's, that's not the motivation here for the word. Um, but at the same time, the timing is, um, it, it is God's timing, I believe. Uh, because, and we need to take a stand in general. Right. And I'm not talking about all that stuff. I'm not talking about your personal uh, traditions. I'm talking about we need to take a stand on God's word. And the reason I say traditions is because uh, you're going to see here uh, in Second Thessalonians chapter two today um, that that's exactly what Paul says. And so we're going to dive into that just a little bit here in our short period of time today. So Second Thessalonians chapter two, uh, starting in uh, verse 13. Uh, this is going to deal with verses through verse 17, where I'm just going to read uh, through verse 15. God's word says this, but we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, uh, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the spirit and belief in the truth to which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or by our epistle. So, so here's the thing, uh, right? And I know in verse 13 specifically, man, as we talk about that, a lot of, a lot of questions about predestination come in and, and I, I'm, I'm not skipping that, but I'm not dealing with that today. Um, th that's for a long discussion, but here's what, here's what I will say about this, because there's some that believe that, you know, okay, well, God has already, uh, determined who will be saved and, and, and predestination in that way. But then there's others who believe as I do that the predestination is that in God, in his foreknowledge already knew who was going to accept him. And so, uh, there again, that's for a long uh, discussion, um, maybe a good sit down Bible study for that. But uh, regardless, regardless of what side you're on there, here's the point. And, and both sides uh, of that argument can agree with this. God is the one who does the saving, right? God is the one who does the saving. He's the one who sent his son, uh, Jesus, to die in our place. Uh, the, the righteousness comes through the blood of Jesus. And our part is to do what he just said right here at the end of verse 13. Belief in the truth. Belief in the truth. And, and so that's where we're going to kind of jump off today because I'm thinking, okay, well, what truth? Right? I mean, that, that wouldn't that be the question? If I tell you today that you need to take a stand on the truth, then you would say, okay, well, you know, in our world today, the truth is subjective, but it's not. There's an absolute truth and his name is Jesus, right? God is absolute truth. He, everything comes from him and we have to compare everything to him and his word to see if it's what we are to be doing. Um, and so what he's talking about, he says, look, the truth that you were taught, and he gives two examples and he says, uh, whether in, in word or in uh, by our epistle." Right now, uh, here's the thing the we have to remember that in the word, see, they didn't have the New Testament, obviously, is is what we're reading. This was a letter that he had written to them. That's the epistle we'll talk about in just a second. But the truth that they were taught in person, the, the truth that um, 
that he spoke to them in conversation, in, in sermons, and and even through the other apostles, through the uh, the church leaders, and and how this was handed down. And, and I ran across this quote, and I had never really thought about it this way, specifically for the time period. Uh, you know, you and I today, and I I know most pastors, you know, when we're really keeping notes and studying, man, we're really. I mean, you know, I, I'm taking notes all the time, and. And even we do that, and I encourage you in, in uh, when you follow along in Bible study and sermons and things to take notes. You can come back and, and look at them and study them. And, and I'm not downplaying that by any means because it is something that has helped me uh, tremendously. And I know it's helped many of you. Uh, but, but I've never really thought about it this way. Um, Leon Morris, he said this. Uh, he said, we are almost incurably convinced that the use of notebooks is essential to the learning process. And I think most of us, a little side note, I think most of us would, you know, we'd be like, yeah, okay. This, uh, however, was not the case in the first century. Then it was often held that if a man had to look something up in a book, he did not really know it. The true scholar was a person who had committed to memory the things he had learned. Until a man had a teaching uh, in his memory, he was not considered... Uh, he was not considered really to have mastered it. And, and just to think about that, uh, I mean, there's a lot of truth in that. That You know, well, if, if you got to go look it up, then you don't really know it. Now, you might be able to find it. And, and you ask me a question now, and I might say, oh, well, I have to go look that up. Um, but to think about that, when he's telling them, uh, you know, first century church, he's telling them, so look, I want you to hold tight. Uh, he tells them two things. Uh, you know, I'm kind of jumping back and forth here. Uh, let me catch the second one. So he tells them in word and the other is by the epistle. And, and really, we've talked about this the last three weeks, last two weeks. And then this week, uh, the first letter to the Thessalonians, uh, to the church at Thessalonica and the second letter that we're going through now. And he's saying, look, I, I've taught you and I've put truths in there for you to learn and to straighten up um, some of the confusion that's going on. And he's talked about that with the rapture and the Antichrist and the way that they should be uh, living and the, uh, commending them on the things that they've done and, and guiding them in prayer and telling them to rejoice. And especially there at the end of First Thessalonians chapter five, man, as we just kind of went down those those bullet points, even last uh, Wednesday in Bible study. But with all that, these two things, he says, look, I want you to do two things with those. He said, I want you to stand fast and I want you to hold to the traditions. Now. When we hear that word tradition, we think, oh, that's that's bad. That's the things that's you know been handed down. And a lot of a lot of times in every generation, the younger generation that comes up wants to do away with those traditions. But the thing is, is they kind of want to set new ones. Right. I mean, we're all guilty of that. We we want to do something different than what was done before. And, and that's fine. But see, even in those don't change just for the sake of change. But with each and every generation that comes, these traditions, right, get in the way. Man-made traditions get in the way. Jesus was always opposing the man-made traditions, like like the Pharisees, right? They they had their man-made um, uh, uh, interpretation of the scriptures, and they were trying to put that almost above the word of God. And, and so he was against those traditions. So what is it that Paul is talking about here? Well, here the tradition is this, right? He tells them to stand fast, be steady, uh, immovable in the word. Um, and and all that is based on the truth, their belief in truth and the, the truth that they have been taught uh, as in comparison to the lies that Satan was trying to convince them of and that people, false prophets were trying to convince them of. But then when he says hold to the traditions, it's the traditions of the gospel truth. The tradition was the, the word that was spread because it wasn't written down that they, they had to hold fast to what they had heard and what they had learned so that they could share uh, with everyone. And the next generation, he says, oh, you need to stand fast. Um, and that's the same thing that you and I need to do today. Man, we need to dive into God's word now more than ever, right? I mean, every day that we grow closer and closer to Jesus' return, it should be a driving force for each one of us to get further and deeper into our relationship with God. And if we do that, 
then we're going to hold those traditions and we're going to pass those traditions on. Not the traditions about what song we're going to sing when or what order we're going to have an order of service or all these things that, you know, a lot of times we get caught up on in, in most churches. But that we're going to hold to the, to the tradition of truth. That we stand on the truth. That we hold fast the word of God. Think about all throughout scripture that there's times where he tells us to be still, tells us to walk, tells us to, uh, you know, to uh, to go, tells us to sit and wait. And and at the same time, there's times where he tells us to fight and there's times where we are to just stand simply in God's word, stand on the truth. He is our firm foundation. Jesus is the cornerstone of our faith. So let's stand in his truth today. Don't, don't stand in your opinions today. Don't stand in your own man-made traditions. But stand on and stand in the truth of God's word today. God bless you, and I pray you have a great, great day.